I think his legacy, it, it speaks for itself. Al was a guy with pretty good size and, and excellent speed. He was a great football coach. An unbelievable innovator. To me, he was a mentor. He was a better man than he was a coach, if that's possible. He was really a good athlete. For his time in the, the 30s, and, and he played on an Ord team that was, I mean, undefeated for like 38 games. He ended up down in Lincoln, and I think was, it remains to this day, the youngest person to ever score a touchdown in the Rose Bowl. After World War II, came back to Lincoln, and he was married at that time, and my sister Sue had been born, and he worked at University High, and he coached there, and so boy, he, he knew he wanted it. Well, I got to know Coach Zickman when he came from Alliance High School to Grand Island Senior High School, and he was my high school coach, he was my college coach. When I came here as a player, we practiced three times a day. He wanted us to be as good as we could possibly be, which we wanted that too. First of all, I think Zick had the, had the ability to make everybody on the team feel important. And he was fiercely loyal to his players, and he just made us believe that, that we were not only the best team, but we were the best coach, and we went to the best school. And it just all started because he just had such great confidence in, in his players. I know that he was important to the, the players he coached. I was uh, privileged to play on some Hastings College teams that played uh, Kearney. Watching Al from afar, I thought he was well organized. He uh, was somewhat innovative. He, uh, he did some things with the spread offense before anybody else did. He had a brilliant football mind. He was way ahead of his time. We took great pride in that. We thought we were doing things that nobody else knew how to do. And when Zick left college, he told me this story and he went into the service and when he left out of the service, he had a chance to play with the Chicago Bears. And he got to know George Hallis, who was the head coach of the Bears. And so when George Hallis took a liking to Zick and gave him his playbook. One of our famous formations was called the Bear Spread, believe it or not, with three wide receivers, which we see today, and then we were in shotguns, and I don't even know if we knew enough to call it a shotgun in those days. Did a lot of things that was unique, but he also did run the full house tee, and we, we were able to run some of the plays out of there almost as if we had been blindfolded because he wanted to be able to execute them well. Everything was orchestrated. When he coached, they could look at the other team when they're warming up, we're gonna do this, or they're gonna give us this. He had a great career there at Kearney, and I know he's in the NAIA Hall of Fame and the Nebraska Hall of Fame and all those kind of things. I think we were fortunate to have him as the athletic director, at least initially in our coaching career here. And he was an excellent, excellent teacher. I mean, I think you can't be a good coach unless you're a good teacher, but, but he carried that over into the classroom and did a really nice job. I think for his time, he had a bigger effect on high school football than anybody in the state of Nebraska. At that time, a lot of us were all involved in coaching. And so what he did is he was willing to share not only his playbook, but also he gave us his practice schedules, he gave us his organization. And I really think that you could go on a Friday night during his time anywhere in the state of Nebraska and you would see a Kearney State offense and defense on at least on one side of the ball and, and a lot of times on both sides of the field. He, uh, he was so giving of what he knew uh, to everyone, to, to the players, to the other people on the staff. He was very, very well respected and should have been. He did so much for this institution. He was fiercely proud of the fact that we had a lot of sports at, at Kearney State in those days, or UNK. And when Title IX came on the scene and women were moving into athletics, he championed women's athletics and he didn't see them as a stepchild. He certainly was a leader in, of that whole Title IX movement and, and look where our athletics are today. Our women athletics are just unbelievably successful. He cared deeply and he desired that they would all achieve success 
And I, you know, that's what I, I cherish, the fact that he was walking right alongside. He didn't turn his back when he quit coaching. I mean, he was concerned about all sports for sure. I think it shows the love that he had for this place and, and for the different sports that were involved because he attended both the men's and women's basketball games. He was at some of the track meets. He was at the volleyball games, he was at the football and the basketball games, and he was always at Loper luncheon. He was just a visible feature. Ely came at everything to him. You guys won't believe how important you were to him. In his mind, there was no place better than to be a Loper. You know, our old saying was, you know, what's a Loper? And we would always say, you'll never know if you haven't been one, and he certainly was one.